What's up everyone, Gamer King Tario here today with a review of PlayStation TV, also known as Vita TV in other parts around the world. It retails for $99.99 in the US and is currently released and available for purchase. You guys are watching footage from the PlayStation Vita titles, not on the normal 5 inch screen but on my 55 inch home theater. The PlayStation TV is a bit of an odd device. It's small, it fits in the palm of your hand, and it allows you to perform three different functions using your DualShock 3, DualShock 4, and an HDMI television. The first function is as a streaming device. More specifically, it's a PlayStation Now portal. That's Sony still in beta streaming service, which allows you to play PlayStation 3 games on a multitude of platforms. How this service works and evolves will be key, and that's a review unto itself. But it's available on the PS TV, as well as the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita in beta form. I will say that as of now, this is not an all-purpose streaming device. If you're hoping to get one of these for a guest bedroom or, you know, your own bedroom and be able to watch Netflix, Prime, YouTube, and then rock some PS3 or PS4 all on the same device, those entertainment apps like YouTube are not supported on the hardware at launch. The second function of the device is the ability to play your PlayStation Vita games on the PlayStation TV. The device has both a slot to put in a full game cartridge and a separate place for your memory card, and it comes with 1 gig of onboard storage. This allows you to play some amazing games in their slightly pixelated glory on the big screen. I'll discuss these features in two separate parts, those who already own a PlayStation Vita and those who don't and would view this as a substitute. If you don't own a Vita and there's been a couple interesting titles that you've always wanted to play, PlayStation TV gives you an opportunity to play some, but not all of those experiences on your TV for a cheaper price. Killzone Mercenary for instance has been reworked to work well with the controller, but say Uncharted Golden Abyss, one of the flagship titles of the Vita, is not available on the service. If you're in this camp, I would honestly recommend just getting a PlayStation Vita. Maybe I'm a bit biased, but if you're going to spend 100 bucks on the PS TV and the money for a memory card and assuming you have a controller laying around, you're probably better off just getting a PlayStation Vita bundle, or maybe continue to wait. You never know if Sony's going to release Killzone Mercenary with controller function as a PS3, PS4 download game anyway. You're also not guaranteed to get that next big Vita title you may want on the PlayStation TV. It's not exorbitantly cheaper, and if you want the Vita experience, you're probably better off just buying a PlayStation Vita. Now, if you're someone who already owns a PlayStation Vita, and the idea of playing some of the games on the big screen interests you, this is probably PlayStation TV's best feature at launch. The function works well and it's easy to set up, though I'm terrified of one day going to work and realizing that I didn't switch my memory card back into the Vita. Performance wise, I was hoping that the PS TV might give a little bump. I tried Borderlands 2 almost immediately and it still ran like garbage unfortunately. Other games also had that typical Vita stutter here and there. It ran like it was the Vita, but is a little bit pixelated on the big screen as you would expect. But for those looking to continue their Vita adventure on their home theater, it worked. The last function involves using the PlayStation TV as a mirroring remote play device for your PS4. Much like you can with the Vita, you can use the PS TV on another TV in your home or anywhere on the network. Now I can only speak to my own experiences, when it comes to networking issues, you have to take any criticism with a grain of salt. And while I do have a solid internet connection, in fact I have the best that I can buy in my area, yours may be faster and you may not encounter any issues at all. With that said, I set up my PlayStation TV upstairs in my guest bedroom on the other end of my house. I started using a Wi-Fi connection with the PS TV a couple feet away from the router. I logged into my PS4, booted up Destiny, and found the game totally unplayable. Bad picture, bad connection, crazy full second input lag. It was awful. I was a little bit puzzled by this, so to do a little unscientific test, I shut down my PS TV, booted up my Vita in the exact same spot, and did remote play. Logged in, and it worked absolutely perfect. Just seamless with no issues as there normally is in that room. So then I tried a wired connection, where both the PS4 and the PS TV were landline connected. This is generally recommended, and while it was slightly better, I would still deem it unplayable, with terrible input lag. Network stuff is so hard to get a general consensus on, so I'm interested to see if anybody has this working, but for me the PS4 remote play feature was unusable. I don't like to look at other people's reviews when I review something, but I did check out some of the comments on Amazon, and I found that this was not an isolated issue. Hopefully it can be patched or fixed at some point, as this is a feature that I was personally looking forward to the most on the device. But as of this review, it was broken for me. Overall, PlayStation TV is a weird device. It feels like it has three core features that would appeal to three different types of people or gamers, and there isn't enough value unless you at least need two of the three. At launch, the best case for PlayStation TV is actually for the hardcore Vita player. The player that has a large collection of games and plays them almost exclusively and wants them on the big screen. I do see value in playing a game like Minecraft or Persona or Final Fantasy X HD and then coming home and putting them on your big screen and continuing your adventure. Is that worth 100 bucks? That really depends on the gamer, though I think everyone else can safely pass on the PlayStation TV for now. That's it for the review guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Follow me on Twitter at KingTarHeel101. Stay tuned for that Minecraft Vita review, should be up tomorrow or the day after. That's it guys, take care.